Hey guys, it's Lon Measley, and today I'm going to be talking about 8 different things you can do once per character for some quick and easy gold. I think those of you who have been leveling alts before BFA and altaholics will appreciate this guide. The first method I'm going to talk about is the plans for the Sulfuran Hammer. Not only are the plans themselves valuable, but the hammer itself is used to craft the Hand of Ragnaros legendary item. As you can see here, the mean price on US servers is about 45,000 gold. You can also learn the plan and craft the hammer yourself. Since you can get 1 plans per character, you can just learn 1 and then sell the rest. To get started on the questline, you need to go to the auction house and purchase a Sulfuran ingot. These are also used to craft the Sulfuran hammer, but for the quest you just need 1. Next, you'll need to head to the Black Rock Depths instance, which if you have the Dire Brew remote from Brewfest, you can just teleport to. After you reach the Black Rock Depths, there should be a mole machine at the entrance. Click on it and go to the domicile. Do not go to the Grim Guzzler even though our target is the Grim Guzzler because the door will be locked. If you're a rogue though, you might be able to pick the lock. From there, you'll have to circle around the bottom side of the map to get to the pink section called the Grim Guzzler. Here in this video, I'm showing you kind of a chopped up version of my route to the area of interest. You can pause from time to time to look at my maps if you get confused. By the way, if you're following this during Brewfest, you can just teleport straight to the Grim Guzzler with the Corrin Dire Brew uh, Dungeon Queue. After you get there, make your way to the NPC called Lockto's Dark Bargainer and start the dialogue with him. It'll only pop up if you have at least one Sulfuran Ingot in your inventory. Then simply talk to him again to complete your quest and you'll have your plans. As a bonus, you can see what he has to offer in terms of profession-specific recipes. The next method I'm going to talk about is involving the mechanical chicken. It is a pet that you can get once per character through a series of quests. Currently, the US mean price is about 70,000 gold. But it can fluctuate a bit depending on your server, such as mine being only 30,000 gold, which is still quite a lot. By the way, getting this pet takes a little longer than the other methods in this video, so if it's not for you, go ahead and skip to the next one. To complete the quest line, you'll have to farm 3 different drops from 3 different places. The first one is a zone drop from Tanaris, and people have found the most success from doing Zolfarak. The items of interest are called Distress Beacons, and here you'll see I've gotten my first one. I got it right around the first boss of my first run of ZF. If you want, you can also farm out the rest of ZF for some rare transmog drops. After getting a Distress Beacon, you'll just have to do a quick and easy escort quest. For the next beacon, you'll want to head to Feralis and farm the Feral Yetis here that have the highest drop rates. I was able to get my beacon within about 10 kills. Grab it and again do the escort quest. For the last beacon, which is probably the rarest one, you'll need to head to the Hinterlands. I recommend farming the oozes at Skulk Rock as they'll have a chance of dropping the disgusting oozling pet. I got my beacon after about 20 minutes of killing oozes and then switching to killing some alliance NPCs. After you do all 3 of the escort quests, go to Booty Bay to turn in your quests. Then you'll be awarded with the mechanical chicken pet. I kept one myself and plan to sell the rest on the auction house. The next method is the quest line for the legendary weapon Shadowmorn. This one takes by far the longest and you have to have a death knight, warrior, or paladin in order to do this. But the rewards are by far the best. If you want to farm ICC anyway for say invincible, you might as well do this on the side. The questline is completely soloable at max level, save the blood infusion quests, which you can easily enlist some help for by paying some people or getting some friends. Let's take a quick look at the buy on equip rewards that you get from the questline. The first one is the Reigns of the Crimson Death Charger. As you can see here, the US mean price is a whopping 500k. This is a red version of the Death Knight's Acherus Death Charger. Next we have Jaina's Locket, which opens a portal to Old Dalaran and sells for on average 80k on US servers. After that, we have Muradin's Favor, which turns you into a Frost Dwarf and sells for on average 97k on US servers. Next we've got the cool Tabard of the Lightbringer which sells for 350k on US servers. 
And last but not least, we've got Sylvanas' music box, which summons a host of banshees to sing for you. And it sells for about 130k on US servers. I'm sure a lot of people don't know about the next method on this list. All you need to do is fly over to this burning house called Heathrow Manor in Braden's book in Val Shara, and rescue the dog in the house. Doing that rewards you with the Grumpy pet. Now the pet isn't really worth that much at about 2000 gold on average, but considering it almost takes no work to get, I think it's worth it. If anything, you can just save the poor dog as part of your collection. For this next method, we're gonna go treasure hunting in our favorite expansion, Warlords of Draenor. What you'll need to do is fly to the northwest corner of Frostfire Ridge, then fly into this little alcove here, and fish at the giant clam. Uh, so what do you think the clam will give us? You guessed it, it's a giant, pretty Draenor Pearl. And as ridiculous as it sounds, this toy actually sells for around 20,000 on US servers. The next two methods involve some of the Legion secrets that were uncovered throughout the expansion, the first one being Kosumoth the Hungering. The cool thing about unlocking Kosumoth is that you not only can get this cool mount here, but you also unlock a weekly world quest that sometimes gives you a Hungering Claw pet. And unlike the other methods in this video, once you unlock the world quest with one character, you can get this pet multiple times with that character. YouTubers such as Mad Season Show have done comprehensive guides on how to unlock this world quest, so be sure to check that out. Basically, you have to get this Weathered Relic item here, and go and unlock a whole bunch of orbs across Azeroth. And once you do that, you'll have unlocked the special world quest for that specific character. You can also unlock the world quest on multiple characters to have more goes at the pet. Note that the items don't drop from his corpse, but rather from the world quest completion. So be sure to wait until the appropriate world quest shows up to get your mount or pet. As of the end of Legion, Kosumoth is generally an easy farm. Just make sure to interrupt his devouring shadows as it heals himself. Now at the price of 2700 on average on US servers, the price isn't impressive, but with Battle for Razoroth coming out and Legion taking a back seat, I can see the prices of these going up. Now the next method also involves a Legion secret, and it's the Sun Daughter Hatchling pet. I have done a video on this pet, and some other YouTubers have also done videos on how to get it, to get it, you'll have to collect a bunch of old world potions and stuff. For more details, make sure to check out those other guides on YouTube. Unlike the Hungering Claw, this pet can only be obtained once per character, but that also means the price is much higher, at over 60,000 on average on US servers. For the last method of this video, I'm going to be talking about the Darkmoon Fair. If you go to the fishing area here and talk to the vendor, You'll find that he sells a faded treasure map for 100 Darkmoon Dagamal fish. The treasure map starts a quest that gives you 100 Darkmoon Fair tickets, and can be done only once per character. If you want to make money with it, you'll mainly be spending the Darkmoon Fair tickets on the Transmog class armor, which are actually selling for even more now, for upwards of 50 to 60k, because apparently class trials can't get them anymore. And to get the Dark Moon Dagger Mall, you can either do your own fishing or buy them from the auction house for cheap. But um, I think nowadays they don't come really cheaply. But still, they're definitely at least worth the 100 Dark Moon Fair tickets. And that concludes my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and check out the slew of other guides that I have on my channel. Peace out guys.